In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to design a book in iBooks Author. I'll be going over some neat tips and tricks of how to modify an existing template to create entirely new uh, custom look for your book. And uh, here's what the finished product is going to look like. Of course, you can use all of these concepts to create any design you want. Um, it's really up to you. Um, but the best part is that this is all going to be done in the free iBooks Author application. You don't need any fancy designer software like Photoshop or InDesign to do anything I'm going to show you. Um, this is a pretty powerful program and um, I'm excited to uh, show you guys how to, how to use it. Um, again, there's also actually going to be a coupon code for uh, iBooksAuthorTemplates.com at the very end, so stick around if you're interested in that. Let's get started. So the first thing uh, you're going to be asked to do when you open up the application is uh, to pick a template to start from. So you can choose a landscape with portrait, meaning they will work in both orientations, um, or you can use a portrait only. We're going to go ahead and select the contemporary um, template, but go sort through them and see which one kind of looks closest to your, your ideal design, um, and that way you won't have to do quite as much work. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our workspace. Um, we're going to show the inspector. We're also going to show the colors. Um, and then we're going to uh, view the rulers. We're going to show the styles drawer. And then we're also going to show layouts. Now, layouts are what your options are going to be. That's actually where we're going to be doing all of this editing, and I will show you why. So let's say you're going to create a book and it's going to have uh, multiple chapters, but you want those chapters to kind of look consistent throughout, you know, so that the reader kind of has a visual gauge, um, letting them know that they're starting a new chapter. I'm going to go ahead and add a new, a new chapter down here at the bottom. Again, see, it looks exactly like this layout up here because that's the chapter layout. Um, so if you modify something down here, let's say that we wanted to delete this image um, and we wanted that to happen in all of these chapters, that's a lot of work. You know, you have to go, let's say you had, you know, 10 chapters, you have to go delete that image in every single chapter of your book. Um, so instead of doing that, what you would do is if you have a layout that you know you want to use, you modify it up here in the layouts. Let's undo this so you guys can see what uh, I'm talking about. Um, you would modify it up here in these, this, this chapter layout section. And that way, it'll follow through throughout your book. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say we wanted to delete this from every single uh, chapter going forward. Let's just delete. If you click Apply Changes, it's going to do that for everything in your book. So this just saves you a lot of time, and that's actually where we're going to be doing most of the modification. All right. So um, the other thing to consider is uh, that we're working kind of in layers. That's how design programs kind of work. So as you can see, this uh, black kind of shaded box is behind this text. Um, and the easiest way to go about starting your design is to say, okay, what's in the back? Let me start there. Although it's not super necessary, it's just kind of a quicker way to uh, go about things. You can certainly add and um, then rearrange objects um, and change them from layer to layer, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, but the best way to do it is to kind of start thinking about what do I want in the background. Okay, so what we have in our background is that green um, square. So let me show you how to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to go up to the shapes. We're going to insert this square. Uh, as you can see over here in the inspector, right now we're on the graphic tab, which is the circle and square little tab. These are all different tabs for those of you who aren't familiar with working um, uh, in programs like this. It's very similar to Pages and Keynote. Uh, we're going to take, instead of using a gradient fill, we're going to choose a color fill. We select that color to change it and go down here to my, uh, my little color swatches. Um, another way to do that, let's say that I wanted to, uh, if you didn't have this color swatch available, but I wanted to mimic something uh, that's a color. Let's say I wanted to mimic this gray color. I can go over here, click on this uh, magnifying glass, go over to the object, let's say it's this gray, that I want to mimic, click on it, and there you go, it changes. Now the way to get those swatches down here is all you have to do is click on this color up here and drag it down. Click and hold and drag down. Let it go, and then it's right there for your use later. But let's go ahead and go back to uh, 
let's go back to filling this into a uh, in with that green color again select the color up here at the top go ahead and click the color you want um, to make it the entire background uh, there's a quick way to do that too if you go up here to this metrics tab the uh, entire background of of your of your surface area or the the space you're going to be working in is 1024 by 748 um, and if you just hit zero and zero to place it it's perfectly centered um, you also have guides that you can use like see these guides um, right you see those blue that blue X basically means that it's it's centered um, on the page so uh, okay so this was supposed to be our background and it's in the front remember I was talking about layers uh, so we need to send that to the back so the way to do that is go to arrange send to back and now it's the background so it's really quick really easy way without going into Photoshop or in design to kind of um, create a, a background for your um, for your book um, so as you saw in the the design we're going for um, we need kind of another background over here um, and it's got a texture in it and I'm going to show you how to create that um, as well hold on so the next thing we're going to do, we're actually going to do the same thing. Why don't we go ahead and delete this, this black object because we definitely don't need that either. Um, we're going to do the same thing we did for the um, green background, only we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you how to get that texture. So remember we saw we wanted, this happens to be gradient fill, we used color fill. Um, now we're going to use image fill. Okay, so we're going to choose an image. Um, I actually got this pattern off of the website subtlepatterns.com. It's completely free and they've got great textures. It's such an easy way to add a lot of visual interest to your, uh, to your book and it makes it look so much more professional, um, especially if you're someone who doesn't really want to go to the trouble of doing complicated layouts. Um, patterns and textures uh, really help kind of lift things off the page. So we're going to go ahead and, and, and insert that. Now that's not really what we wanted, right? So uh, I'm going to show you how to get that repeating pattern um, in just a moment. First, let's go ahead and um, size this to the size we wanted. We wanted it to kind of be, I don't know, again, we can, you can, you can do it by eyeball, which is what I was just doing, um, or you can, you know, you can type in uh, the exact measurements that you want. Uh, Go ahead and throw that over. As you can see, it's it's not doing exactly what we want, right? That's not the look we wanted. So let's go back over to this uh, graphic tab. And notice how it says image fill, which we chose, and then it says scale to fit. What you're, want, you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna tile it. Ah, and there we go. Now we have that great textured pack background um, that we had in our original design. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we kinda wanna look over here. Um, we wanted that kind of a white, a white border, this square border that goes around, um, goes around our text. Um, and there's an easy way to get that as well. Again, we're going to go back up to the shape tool. Here's another thing that you also want to uh, consider um, when, whoop, when you are Inserting shapes, you might notice that uh, objects cause things to, to wrap around them. And you know, this, this is causing things to disappear. It's moving things around. That's not what we want. We just wanted an element on the page. The way to get rid of that is to, uh, to go over to this wrap tab and unclick object causes wrap. Of course, you can click different types of wrap as well if you do actually want that um, to occur with an object. Um, but we don't want that right now. So Go ahead and do that. The next thing you're going to do is we didn't want a color fill, so we just want that nice outline. Um, you're going to select none, so it's transparent. And then we're going to go down to this line. It's already on it, actually. Um, we're going to click the color. We're going to change it to white, and then we're going to bump that up to three or four. That seems about right. Um, and we're going to go ahead and... Notice how it's not making those those objects move any any longer. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and insert, stretch that out a little bit. And there we go. Now we have that border, right? 
Okay, so the next thing we need to do is um, delete these lines. And this is sometimes pretty complicated for people and frustrating, um, but it's really simple. Notice I selected this, this line and there's two X's on either side of it. Um, and I'm hitting delete and nothing is happening. Um, it can be really frustrating for people, but it doesn't mean you can't delete it. What it means is that it's a locked object. And all you have to do is go up to arrange, unlock. You'll notice those X's change to squares. Now you, when you hit the delete button, it actually works. We're going to do that for both of these. Um, so anytime you feel like you can't move an object around, go and check and see if it's a locked object. And more times than not, I'm fairly certain that if you just unlock it, you'll be able to delete it. Um, so those two things are gone. Next, we're going to change uh, the the chapter font to that really pretty uh, ribbon kind of font. Um, again, if you are not somebody who feels like they are, you know, creatively or, or design kind of inspired, you know, that that's not your strong suit. Um, another really easy way besides these, these textures is to work with fonts. Um, they just add a lot of character. They don't require you to kind of um, match colors or uh, you know, do complicated layouts. It's just a great way to um, add that little ac extra kind of professionalism to your work without a lot of hassle. Um, so we're going to change this font to a really pretty uh, ribbon font that I found over at uh, LostType.com. And um, it's a really cool site. They've got a lot of really great fonts. You can also go use uh, free fonts over at Google. Um, but uh, this place, uh, the place where I got this ribbon font, they actually let you pay um, what you want for the font. So uh, make sure you read the licensing agreement. Um, but really cool, really cool site. Um, we're going to bump that up a little bit as well. And I notice how the text wrapped, um, you know, all you have to do to prevent that um, from happening ah, is uh, enlarge that, that box. Um, and then we also wanted that text to be centered. Um, and that looks pretty good. So we're going to go up here. We wanted this to be a little bit bigger as well. We're going to stick with Helvetica New. Let that look pretty good. Um, go ahead and do that. And, you know, we're going to go ultra light. And, again, fonts seem to be one of those things that people tend to, uh, you know, d designers are very particular about it. Um, a lot of, a lot of people will say, you know, uh, I don't know. It's very heavily debated. It's almost like a specialty field within design. Don't worry about all that stuff. Um, just play around with fonts that you think go together. Um, and you'll probably end up getting, you know, something that looks great. As long as you just play around, don't worry about the rules. Um, all right. So that looks pretty good. Actually, I think we had it down much further, huh? Okay, and again, we wanted to center this font as well. What I'm doing is I'm extending those boxes so that all of these boxes are equal so that when I do center the text, it is actually centered um, for everybody. Although that looks a little wide, so what we're going to do is we're going to close that down a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. 